Today I'm going to teach you how to land and it's a practical demonstration that starts for beginners but goes all the way to really advanced. So no matter what level you are, stay tuned and specifically we're talking about an FPV drone that's in full manual mode. It's also what we call acro mode and if you need a tutorial for that I'll put a link in the description. But landing and even hovering in acro mode is very difficult indeed because we don't have those hand holding features like GPS altitude hold, return to home and you know it won't land itself, we have full control. It's a bit like comparing a self-driving car to a rally car. The technology is amazing in a self-driving car but it doesn't give you as much control as you get in a rally car. So to have all the fun you need to fly in acro mode and what goes up must come down. So you need to know how to land. I should also just point out that I'm going to be using the onboard camera for the video so you'll see exactly what I see through the goggles and there's a good reason for that because camera angle um, and lack of stabilization will show you a really sort of realistic view so you'll see exactly what I see when I'm landing. So let's get into it now. Come back at the end because I've got some extra tips and tricks for you then. Okay so ideally you want to practice this when it's not too windy. It's a bit windy here today, but we'll be all right. And the first thing to know is when you're an absolute day one beginner with FPV, the easiest thing to do, of course, is just keep that constant forward momentum, stay up high and just cruise around. But getting any of the precise movements like hovering or landing is very difficult because you need so much fine motor control. And the first tip and the biggest tip really that you must do is learn how to hover first. And you'll see why hovering is so important for landing in just a moment. But let's just very briefly go over hovering. If your thrust is exactly equal to gravity, that's your hover point. If thrust is more than gravity, we'll ascend, because the force from the air being pushed down is greater than the force of gravity. If I drop the throttle a bit, gravity is now the greater force and will descend. And when we can get those two forces exactly equal, that's our hover point. And again, with the sort of camera drones and uh, the GPS drones, they'll hover for you. But we're doing this in full manual mode, full acro mode. So we're making constant tiny corrections, just like when you're driving a car and you're making small corrections with the steering wheel to stay straight. We're just making small corrections here. If we go too far forward like this, I'll pitch back slightly. If we go too far back, I'll pitch forward. If we, go, if we roll left too much, I'll pitch right a bit to correct and we're going to just try and maintain this hover. So you can get pretty precise with that and I'm correcting for the wind here as well otherwise I can get it even better but there you go that's not a bad hover so you just practice this that's really crucial for landing. So let's get into why. The reason is once you've found that hover point all you're going to do for a nice soft landing is just decrease your throttle a tiny amount and that's going to allow you to just sort of gently lower down like a feather onto a pillow. See how I'm just coming down very slowly here. All I've done is found that hover point, drop my throttle and we've landed. So that's you know that's your a, a huge point, a huge sort of thing that you need to be able to do is hover. Okay? Once you've got that down, you know by the way start somewhere big so you know there's a big space over here. What I'd do is just perhaps um, look at the building, that's going to help me kind of fix my tension on and know my altitude. And then I'm just going to find that hover point and just drop slightly below and we're going to come down and land softly. And then disarm. Now the next thing you need to know is there's, a, there's something that can throw your landings off a little bit. And that's something called ground effect. So we're going to get into what ground effect is right now and uh, once you're aware of it you'll be a better pilot. So let's say we are going to do a nice soft landing here. When I'm up here, when I'm sort of 10 foot off the ground or so, the air being pushed down by the propellers is completely unobstructed. But when I get closer to the ground, what will happen is the air being pushed down by the propellers will hit the ground and it will cause us to bobble back up again. See how I just went back up again there? The reason for that is because the air being pushed down by the propellers is bouncing off the ground it creates extra thrust. It only happens when you get very close to the ground, but it can throw off your landings. And when we get quite advanced in a minute, you'll need to keep ground effect in mind. I'll try and do it over here so you can see it on camera. Um, what I want you to do is practice this a few times. Just gently descend and then when you 
my bag's in the way a little bit here, but hopefully you'll be able to see it if I do it just here. Um, when we get close to the ground, now I didn't, I did actually touch the ground that time, but let's go down even slower. There, see how I bounced off the ground? That wasn't an input from my thumb, that was pure ground effect. And it's, once you're aware of it, just try that a few times, feel where the ground effect kicks in, and once you're aware of that ground effect, it's very easy to correct for. When you're expecting it to kick in, all you do is just drop the throttle. Now, that bobbling there was caused by air mode, and we're going to get into that in a second. But yeah, just practice that ground effect. Another way you can deal with it is just simply by disarming. So, we're, I'm going to put a fresh battery on here, and then we're going to talk about a couple of other things and get quite advanced with this. Okay, so I'm back in the air with a fresh pack on. And what I was talking about earlier is air mode. And what that is, is that's the flight controller correcting for the effect of the actual ground. It's different from ground effect. Uh, and back in the day when air mode was first introduced, air mode, by the way, is what will allow me to pop all the way up here, drop throttle, and still maintain the propellers spinning just slightly so that you don't fall out the air. What you need to know is air mode needs to be switched on to do all the kind of acrobatic maneuvers like that. It's an amazing thing. But yeah, when it was first introduced, you'd touch the ground and the flight controller would correct for the effect of the ground and you'd bounce back up about six foot. So you had to land either incredibly softly or disarm before you hit the ground. So it's a good way to practice soft landings is if you can come down and not really get an effect by air mode, then you know you've landed really softly. Let's see what happens with this landing right here. Okay, so I didn't really bobble at all there, I didn't really bounce. Air mode didn't really uh, kick in because I landed so nicely and soft. My friend Josh, he has air mode on a switch, and that's something you can easily set up in beta flight. Put air mode on a switch, and then just when he's coming into land, he'll actually flick that switch so that air mode doesn't affect him. Another thing you can do is just disarm a split second before you touch the ground. So just when I'm about to hit the ground here, I just, actually I didn't disarm quick enough there. But yeah, you could just disarm. If you do it quick enough, air mode won't be a factor. But honestly, it's quite a good thing to leave on because it's gonna sort of tell you how soft your landing was. So uh, I'd recommend leaving it on um, and see, you know, see when you land, how much air mode effect you're getting. And then see, right, that's a perfect example there. See that bobble in there? That was air mode. Okay, so if I'd landed softer, we wouldn't have had that. Anyway, just something to be aware of. So we can get really advanced with this, and when you get really advanced landings, it's actually called a perch. It's known as, you know, it's a trick in itself in FPV. Um, it's a perch. So we can be really precise. Try and, let's see if we can perch on this window ledge right here. So to do a perch, we're just doing a really precise landing. Simple as that, really. Um, but there is a tip, a huge tip with perching that I can give you, and that is to be below the thing you're gonna perch on. Okay, so in this case, uh, what you'll, you may or may not have noticed is I was below the window, and because of camera tilt, that allows me to keep that window in view, and then it's much easier to be able to perch on something. If I was coming in from above, you'd I'd end up having to guess what the drone was going to land on. So I can't really see this wall because my camera's tilted very slightly. Um, so if I was coming down like this, see how the part we're going to land on is completely blind in the camera at the moment. So if I was coming down here, I'd be guessing where my landing is. It would make that incredibly difficult. So a huge tip for this is just to be below it. Doesn't matter if you're landing on a car, a tree stump, a window ledge, whatever. Just be below it like this, be precise and controlled, come down and make sure you disarm quick um, and you're good to go. So there we go. That's a really advanced perch. But before you get onto that, you know, start with like a bigger, Let's, let's try something bigger here. I mean, this is a bit bigger. You might want to try something like this before you try something like the window ledge. You just come down and land on that. Um, but, you know, before that, start with something even bigger. So, you know, just use a huge area like this and, you know, maybe like find a, a marking on the ground. Maybe you see this scorch mark here. You might want to just actually, no, you probably make your drone really dirty doing that. But yeah, just start big and you've got a big target then and then you sort of make that target smaller and smaller um, until eventually you know you can land on really small stuff and it's super useful because sometimes you know you'll be flying on a beach or in the snow or somewhere like that and you don't want to touch the ground you want to be able to come in 
and land on your bag that's really useful because then you know you never touch that sand you don't touch the snow and the best part is you see is every time you fly you can practice this always pick something really small like your bag or something that's going to challenge you and then when you fly you know come in and just try landing on it and at first you'll probably fail but you know you get better and better as you go along and eventually uh, i'm just getting carried away with this freestyle now a quick wrap up and some final tips remember learn how to hover find that hover point and then descend very slowly like a feather onto a pillow be aware of ground effect and also the effect of air mode and then start somewhere big and narrow in till your target gets smaller and smaller every time you fly practice landing but not just that take an entire battery and just practice landing it's been locked down here in the uk but this is something you can practice even in a small garden if you're up to it and what's great is your flight time goes from about three to four minutes to sometimes seven or eight minutes you're just cruising around not using much throttle and perching on different things I've been landing on my car, been landing on my little boy's tree house, the table, a little chair, my bag, and anything else I could think of. So just keep practicing it and you know try and get that precise control. Maybe practice on the simulator. I'm not a fan of the sims myself, but you know it might be useful for other people. And definitely be aware of your camera angle. The lower your camera angle is, the easier it is to land because the more of the ground that you can see. Um, so Hope that helped. If you got some value, definitely give me a thumbs up. It would help a lot. Let me know in the comments what tutorial do you want to see next. Four minutes. Five minutes. Six minutes. 